Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official NFL week number five picks and predictions where I go through every game and give my final score prediction beginning with a Thursday night matchup between the Buccaneers and the Falcons, Atlanta sitting at two and two, the Buccaneers at three and one coming off that impressive win against Philadelphia. And in a spot where Atlanta's at home, I do think they get this win and they cover that very, very small spread. You can see the analytics giving them a 52% chance to win. The Buccaneers, it's hard to get a read on the Buccaneers. I mean, they are 3-1 and one, to be fair. They did get destroyed by Denver at home a few weeks ago. A lot of these NFL teams are just so bipolar. They'll play great one week. They'll play terrible the next. I will just take the, uh, the home team in this matchup, Atlanta, to win and cover that one and a half point spread. Moving on to the London game, the 9.30 a.m. game. It is Minnesota sitting at 4-0 on the year. Sam Darnold potential early season MVP candidates. You do have the Vikings with a 54% chance to win. The Jets had a real bad performance against the Broncos at home. They scored zero offensive touchdowns. They just scored nine total points. They scored zero touchdowns in general. I do think in this scenario, the Jets have a very good defense. At some point, we know the Vikings are going to have to lose a game. They are. And I think this is the week. The Jets win this game 22 to 19, and they cover the two and a half point spread, winning it outright. Moving out to the one o'clock window, it is the Carolina Panthers traveling to take on the Bears. The Bears, three and a half point favorites. Caleb Williams playing a little bit better. You know, he had a bunch of garbage time yards a few weeks ago. Maybe that got him some confidence. They're 2-2 two and two now. The Bears running the ball better. This is a good spot for them against the Carolina team who's coming off that loss to Cincinnati. Carolina, even with Andy Dalton, they're still not very good. They're still probably only going to win four or five games at the absolute most. Three and a half is an annoying number, but I do think the Bears can cover it. They were able to cover... A similar spread against the Rams. They won like 24 to 18 or whatever. I think they win this game maybe even in a bigger fashion with the crowd, with the environment, with the defense against the Carolina team who again, even with Andy Dalton, he's a decent veteran backup, but he's nothing crazy. They end up winning this game. Maybe they get a defensive touchdown 26 to 13. Next, we do have Baltimore traveling to Cincinnati. So this is a a fun AFC North matchup. Cincinnati, they needed that win last week. They got it. So now they are 1-3. Baltimore started 0-2. They're 2-2 now. They're coming off that blowout Sunday night win against the Bills. They are 2.5 point road favorites. And I do think Baltimore is going to be too much for Cincinnati in this matchup. They've been playing so well recently. I was going to pick Cincinnati, but Baltimore, especially based on Cincinnati, their interior defensive line, not the best. Lamar Jackson, the running ability. Derrick Henry, the dude had like a, what an 87-yard touchdown or something on his first carry against Buffalo, they'll end up winning this game. And I think they'll cover that two and a half point spread. Next, we do have the Dolphins traveling to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. New England is sitting one and a half point favorites. The Dolphins, horrible Monday night performance against Tennessee. Nobody has any confidence in their quarterback situation right now. But being that it is the NFL, they'll probably score 30 points this game. But no, I think New England wins this game. Whatever New England decides to do, they need to start Drake May at some point. I know he's come in in garbage time a few times, but honestly, I don't know if they should actually start Drake May based on how some of these other rookies are doing. I guess Daniels is doing very good, but a few of them are struggling. Like Bo Nix is playing horrible. Caleb Williams, I guess, is figuring it out. You would think they would go to Drake May at least halfway through the season. We'll have to see, but they should be able to win this game and cover that New England defense at home against whatever the Dolphins throw out there. As we expect Tua not to be playing, I would imagine it should be a relatively easy win, 20-13, to lower scoring game there. Next, we do have the Browns traveling to take on the Commanders. So Washington sitting three-point favorites. It's crazy right now. They're the talk of the NFL, 3-1 and with a rookie QB. The Browns at 1-3. and The Browns should have beaten the Raiders. I mean, you had some bad penalties. I don't know how they lost that game, but... The Browns are three-point underdogs, and I do think when everyone, you know, they love the rookie QB, the Browns are going to surprise some people. They go on the road, they win this game. They've got a very good defense. Deshaun Watson, believe it or not, did play well against Las Vegas. He had a few big plays wiped out by penalty. The offensive line is a big concern for the Browns, but this is the NFL. A rookie quarterback against a really good defense who's been playing well. Jaden Daniels might be humbled in this matchup and the Browns are due for a win. They win this game on the road 23 to 20. A lot of people are saying the Browns should tank. 
they really, I mean, they've just got such a bad roster construction. It's hard for them to tank and really even draft a quarterback because of Deshaun Watson and the the dead money if they cut him. Even if they benched him, it would be a mess. Moving on to the Indianapolis Colts traveling to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. The Jaguars sitting at 0-4, the Colts at 2-2. Anthony Richardson got hurt again last week. We'll see if he's back. But Joe Flacco, obviously a very, very good backup QB. He came in and led Indianapolis to a win against the Steelers. Jacksonville sitting as three-point favorites. I think everyone expects Jacksonville to win this game and finally snap that losing streak. They probably will cover. I mean, they're only, you look at the analytics, a 51% chance to win. They have not been good this year. Trevor Lawrence has really been a letdown, but I do think they they win this game and they cover that three-point spread at home. Moving on to Houston taking on Buffalo. So Buffalo traveling to Texas, and what a really good matchup this is. Buffalo had a really bad loss on the road last week. I think the jury is still kind of out on them because of the receiver situation. They just don't have a true number one receiver. Josh Allen is great and all, but it's going to be hard for them. Obviously, their previous number one receiver, Stephon Diggs, is on Houston, and I'm expecting a higher scoring game. Houston sitting at 3-1. and They had that embarrassing loss to Minnesota, but other than that, they've been very good. They're coming off that win against Jacksonville. This is basically a pick'em game, and I'll go with the home team. I will go with Houston to win this game, 30-26, to higher scoring matchup. Buffalo given a 56% chance to win, according to the analytics, but a lot of that is due to a few early season blowouts. I like Houston. I like their offense. It's more explosive. Even though Josh Allen, you could argue, he's, a, you know, he's obviously a top three QB in the NFL, but uh, it's a tough matchup going on the road in that one. Moving on to the 4 o'clock window, it is Denver hosting the Las Vegas Raiders. You've got Denver sitting three-point favorites. They're coming off that outright win as like a seven-point underdog against the Jets. They're 2-2. Two and two. The Raiders are 2-2. Two and two. They're coming off a home win against the Browns. Denver given a 53% chance to win. This is a true coin flip game. I might have given this game too many points. It might be like 17-16, to 16, but it's going to be probably very close and very low scoring. I mean, Bo Nix has got to be setting some type of record. I swear, every time I see Bo Nix, his stat line, he's always like, let's just say 18 of 26 for like 72 yards. I'm not even kidding you. Like he'll have 26 attempts for like 80 yards. It's real bad. Like it's next level bad. And that was what Caleb Williams was doing the first few weeks. But I will take Denver to win this game. They've got a good defense. They've been playing well. Back-to-back wins. You go to... Tampa Bay, you get that win. You go to the Jets. You only score 10 points, but you win that game. Kind of on a on a missed field goal, but still, I have them winning this one. But the three-point spread's a little bit rich for me. It's going to be very close and very low scoring. Next, you do have the Cardinals traveling to take on the 49ers. The 49ers now 2-2. Two and two. They easily dispatched of the Patriots at home, and now they're seven and a half point favorites in this one against the Cardinals team who is reeling. I think the Cardinals put up a fight in this game. At some point, Kyler Murray is going to have to do something. I mean, you've got Marvin Harrison Jr. The guy's averaging like 180 passing yards per game. Kyler Murray is. So he'll throw for a little bit more. You know, Christian McCaffrey might be done for the year. San Francisco, they're a good team, but seven and a half might be a little bit of an overreaction. The Cardinals should be able to keep this game close enough towards the end. They will end up covering that seven and a half point spread. Next, we do have Green Bay traveling to the Rams. So you've got LA sitting at one and three, Green Bay at two and two. They got shell shocked against Minnesota. They did have some nice garbage time points there. The Packers did. They ended up scoring like 22 points in that game. They are sitting two and a half point favorites. I think Green Bay wins this game easily. I still think the Rams end up only winning like four or five games this year, drafting a quarterback in their first round and moving on from Stafford. Even though Stafford's not terrible, it's just there's so many injuries on that roster. I would imagine Sean McVay probably wants uh, a young QB to develop and build around. And the Packers, this is a get right game for them. They end up winning. They cover the two and a half point spread in that one. Another 425 game. It is the Giants traveling to Seattle. So Seattle coming off. The Monday night loss, a really bad defensive performance by them. Jared Goff was 18 of 18 in that game. But Geno Smith was really good. I mean, he threw threw for a bunch of yards. And then the Giants, the Giants are just not good. They had that Thursday night loss. They're one and three. They need a new quarterback. Although Daniel Jones has been better the past two weeks, it's still not good enough. I think Seattle wins this game, barely covers the six and a half point spread. They win 27 to 20 in that one. Moving on to the Sunday night game. Whenever there's an AFC-NFC Sunday night matchup, it's it's more fun that way. You do have the Cowboys traveling to take on the Steelers. The Steelers sitting two and a half point favorites, given a 53% chance to win. 
it's hard to pick the Cowboys in this matchup. It really is. They're so one-dimensional. It's it's hard for the Cowboys to run the ball. It forces them to throw. I didn't love their performance Thursday night against the Giants. It was like everything had to go perfect for them. And they ended up winning by five, thankfully, barely covering the four and a half point spread. In this one, Pittsburgh, two and a half point favorites. I think Pittsburgh ends up winning this game and just overwhelming Dallas. Justin Fields is developing into a nice quarterback. He threw for over 300 yards. They almost came back in that game where they were down early in Indianapolis to win. And they're also at home. They've got a solid defense against a Dallas team. Again, just very one-dimensional, very average offensive line. Dallas should have a good defense, but Micah Parsons was seen in a boot this week. I I don't know. I'll take this. There's just too many unknowns with the Cowboys. Pittsburgh wins this game and covers the two and a half point spread. Next, we do have New Orleans traveling to take on the Chiefs. This is the Monday night game. The Chiefs sitting at 4-0. They are five point favorites in this matchup. The Chiefs have had a weird year. I mean, sure, they're winning all their games, but that offense just does not look explosive. Rice is now going to be out for a while. You would expect them to potentially trade for a receiver. I, believe it or not, do like the upset in this matchup. I will take the Saints to win this game outright as five-point underdogs, 24-19. to The Saints had a very explosive offense the first few weeks. It's kind of toned down recently. They've lost a few games, but I still think they're good enough to go on the road and win in Kansas City. The NFL, anyone can win at any given time. And I think the Saints are good enough to go in to Arrowhead, even in a hostile environment, even in a Monday night game. It's not like the Chiefs are world beaters, let's be honest. They've really kind of had an average offense this year. They've got a good defense, but I think that the Saints can go in and get a surprising upset win. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.